On this video, I'm gonna show you the easiest and cheapest way to have a massive power supply for your van life or off-grid setup. Now to achieve this, what I'm going to be doing is adding a 100 amp hour battery to my current EcoFlow and my Blue Eddy systems as a backup supply. But you can also use an inverter if you don't have one of those units. The main thing about this setup is I don't know anything about wiring and electronics. So I'm doing this the simplest way possible by using the cigarette lighter uh, plug-in and using the EcoFlow and Blue Eddy cables that it came with and then using an adapter cable to make this work. Let's check it out. You can see here we're at 9% and it's charging at a full 98 watts. That's because we're going in through the side there, which is the solar input. So that's what you would expect, about 100 watts input. Well, not the fastest charge time out there. It is by far the easiest and cheapest way of charging your batteries, backing them up with a much bigger battery like this Lightime 100 uh, amp hour battery without having to know anything about uh, electronics and wiring and soldering and, and all that kind of stuff. So now we're about seven hours later. You can see here, uh, we're at 100%. So it's basically full. I think there's, there's just a bit of draw, I guess, coming across here, but yeah, I can unplug it now. It's the next day now. I charged the EcoFlow yesterday from zero to 100. I also charged my Blue Eddy here this morning from 93% to 100, so it was mostly charged, but it's the same deal here. I've got this, this cable plugs in to there. This uses a cigarette lighter and it plugs into this. And this has a nice cap on it too when I'm not using it, like right now, everything's disconnected, connected over here and this is charging and we can see here says it's between 80 and 100. I don't think that's quite accurate. You can see here once it's full, it's full. It tells you it's full. So after doing some math here, I got the two units EcoFlow River Pro, which is a 720 watt hour and then the Blue Eddy AC 180, which is an 1152 watt hour. Now the Lightime 100 amp hour is actually a 1280 watt hour. 1280, it's an extra 130 watt hours more but at a fraction of the cost. Now you sacrifice some of those bells and whistles, but the thing is, if you ever got a setup like me where you have one of these units or you just get a much cheaper, smaller unit, you can then buff up a smaller unit with a much bigger battery like this that is significantly cheaper. Like a unit like this costs at least a thousand bucks. Like usually they're 12, that's a, on sale, 1200 bucks normal. And I believe these ones are 750 Canadian normal, where this here is like 470 bucks, I think. So it's just, it's like half the price. Now in terms of this, this charger that I got here, which doesn't come with the Lightime unit, you can, you buy your own separate charger. Uh, that, that unit was, I think 68 bucks. So you can almost charge the EcoFlow double off of the Lightime. I should have like 40% of my battery, but this unit is bouncing between uh, 80 and 80% basically and higher. So it's not accurate. Once again, though, if you want an accurate reading, you have to get an input and output thing that measures the amount of current and that gets a lot more complicated. I don't know much about that, so I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I do. There are some other videos online I'll link up that where guys use a booster module which doubles the voltage and then you can get a higher charge as long as the unit you're charging can uh, support the extra charge. You can also double the voltage from 12 to 24 if you have two lifetime batteries. You connect them together and then connect it into the unit, it will double the, the charge speed. The other thing you can do if you don't have a unit already, a power station like an EcoFlow or a Blue Eddy, you can just buy an inverter and then that will convert the power straight out of the, the light time into power that can be used. And I know there's a lot of people who already have a unit and they want to just add battery capacity. The reason why I went with the Lightime 100 amp hour battery is because there's a guy on YouTube, what's his name, Will Pros. He's, he does like a, does a solar reviews and stuff, has like 800, 900,000 subscribers. He knows what he's talking about. He reviews this stuff all the time and he gave this a very high review. Looks like a pretty beefy BMS. The plugs are glued, which is a good sign. The solder joints did get up to the proper temperature. This looks like a nice BMS, actually. And I've seen basically every other creator has given this battery high reviews. That it's the absolute best budget priced battery out there. And for a Canadian, having warehouses in both not only in America, but in Canada as well, so we don't have high shipping rates, this was just a no-brainer for me. It's been a few days from the last clip, and what I decided to do is instead of using the alligator clips is to get some proper um, eye, eye hooks or whatever they're called. Put them underneath the screws so I don't have to deal with the alligator clips at all. And that's what I did. All right, so what you can see here is the alligator clips are over there. I took them off. So all I needed to do was find a cable with the same uh, plug. I believe this is a male plug. <laughs> I initially bought the wrong one. So yeah, I had to find that and then replace those ends with 
These ends, you can see here, I've got them screwed in there. They're just those eyelet um, hooks and th that comes out onto this cable right here. You can see, and it has the proper adapter. Now this can uh, plug directly into this. That's hooked up to, once again, the cigarette adapter. And then I can just plug this into either the EcoFlow River Pro or my Blue Eddy. Now being a novice with this, the one thing I knew I had to get right was the, the gauge of the wire, which is the, the thickness has to be, it should be the exact same as the ones with the alligator clips because that was designed with, uh, for the battery. And that's exactly what I did. I believe they're 12 gauge wire. I'll link up the exact ones down below that I found that are exactly the same and I actually measured them out and they are exactly the same gauge wire. So we should be good to go now. I'm out at my vehicle now, just pulling out all my stuff here to get my van life set up ready for the year. And let me show you how I set up this lifetime battery with my other units in my vehicle. So you see here, I've got the lifetime battery and we're gonna be putting this behind my seat and underneath because it doesn't have a display, there's no need to have it up top here, right? So I've got these two units with the displays up here. This makes much more sense. What I'm gonna do is basically pull my seat forward like this. I can put the battery down here and then I can just have the cords run up and I've designed the system here. This is on a hinge so I can still use it but I can just fold it back up. There's a hinge down here and then when the seat is pushed back it's just hidden away now before we put this away let's go over some of the features of the 100 watt hour battery i've got here so this battery here is 100 amp hours it's their mini version it's 12.8 volts it weighs 19 pounds in comparison the two ones here i believe this one's around 40 pounds 39 pounds and this one i think is 22 pounds so you get a lighter battery but this is 1280 watt hours or 100 amp hours of power. So there's more power in this than there is in my giant Blue Eddy AC180, which is crazy. This is only 1152 watt hours. This is 1280. <laughs> it's crazy to think about that. That's why you get so much value when you go for a strict battery unit like this and then jerry rig it like this to charge these units, or you can get, get an inverter and a lot of people will end up getting two or three or four and connect these in sequence and then have a ton of power with one display output. Now for the people who want the technical stats, this is the lightest 100 amp hour uh, LiPo 4 battery, which is lithium phosphate, as, as I said, at 19 pounds. It also has the highest energy density at 164.5 watt hours per liter. The lifetime BMS is reliable for 10 years of use every day. This is expandable up to 16 batteries for a max of 20.48 kilowatts of energy, which is insane. These batteries run at over 4,000 deep cycles at 100% and over 6,000 at 80% and 15,000 cycles at 60%. And for anyone new out there who doesn't know what that means, basically you can drain the battery all the way to the bottom 4,000 times and then 6,000 6, times all the way to 80%. As you use the batteries, they slowly get less and less capacity over time. But even then, when you're down to 60% capacity, you can still use it 15,000 times. So it's a great value. This battery offers 100 amps of continuous charge and discharges at 250 amps current for five seconds max. The recommended charge on this is 20 amps and the charge voltage is 14.4 volts. Now, if you're new to battery systems, one of the things you have to look at is the charging temperature that batteries can be charged or should be charged. And this one is between zero degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius. So you can, you can go to the desert, you can go to hot places. You don't wanna be charging this below zero. And for my American friends, that's 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it says here discharge temperature. You can basically use the battery from minus 20 Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius, which is minus four Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And the storage temperature basically is at what temperature can you store the battery safely? It says minus 10 to 50 degrees. That's Celsius, which is 14 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So simply put, you don't want to be charging this battery below freezing. You can store it a bit below freezing and you can actually discharge it, you know, minus 20, which is quite a bit below freezing, that's Celsius. This battery in particular doesn't have low temperature protection. There are others that do, nor does it have uh, self-heating and some of those other features, but for the quality of cells and power and the amount of energy you get, this is like the best value you can get out of there. And the reason why I got this one I mentioned earlier is because the uh, Will Prowse, I think his name is, uh, huge YouTube channel, recommended it. He broke this apart, he ripped it apart, he looked at all the components and he was very impressed with it. So, so now let's put this in my unit and I'll show you guys the full setup when it's all put together. So you can see here, I've got the battery in. And one thing to note before I close this all up is you can see these wires I got. This one here, which is the, the cigarette lighter, it, it has a fuse that comes with it. 
So something to note, I had a friend who does, knows a bit about electrical and said I should have a fuse on one of these. So this can't surge and you know go into the other unit or anything else I wanna charge with this. This is protected. So we can close this up now and we can bring these cables over back up here. All right, so we look at this, I've got my EcoFlow put back there. This is how I do mine, I do them back to back. So one on this side, and I usually put like camera and drone stuff and etc. there. And then over here, as you guys saw, we have the light time down here now. The EcoFlow is up here and you can see it's charging. So I've got the cigarette lighter over here. It's plugged in, same thing down here. The light time 100 amp hour is charging the EcoFlow right now. And you can see the EcoFlow is charging my phone right now. So I had to put a load on it because I'm already at 100%. So we're charging the phone here with the fast charge. And for added security, I've got this bike lock here that goes through this metal bar on the back of the chair and that's attached to the battery. This only stops someone from just coming in and smashing and grabbing. So I put those through all of these bars just so someone can't smash and grab. Obviously if someone came in with a saw or whatever could easily cut this and cut this and take them, but it prevents minor theft. And then that just goes back. Boom. And now if I want to charge this unit, it's pretty easy as well. All right, now for the Blue Eddy unit, you can see here, I just brought out this uh, massager just to get it down so it's not full power. We're at 99%. It's currently plugged in here. This uses a different plug. If we follow this cable down on my uh, Honda CRV here, my 2009, I've got a cigarette plug on the back of my vehicle. So I actually have two. And so what I do is I just unplug this and pull this around and they can plug it in over here. So if I want to charge the, the Blue Eddy, grab the plug, bring it over, and then just, we just take that and plug it in. And that's it. Now we're getting power from the 100 amp hour light time going into the Blue Eddy. And if we check the Blue Eddy now, we can see here it's plugged in. It only takes a few seconds to kick in. You can see right up to the maximum, 98 watts. Cause that's basically what we're gonna get from the battery based on the current voltage is hundred watts uh, you can connect those in, in sequence and I think you would get 200. I'm not an electrician, or but that's but I know this works and this is safe and this is good to go and that'll just sit there and charge the battery. The beauty of this system too is now I can grab the cigarette lighter plug from the EcoFlow and I could plug it in down here if I wanted to charge that off of the alternator as I'm driving. So essentially I'd be driving and charging like the EcoFlow and right now I'm charging the Blue Eddy off of this Lightime battery. You can charge both at once. So some of you might be wondering, David, can you charge the Lightime battery off of the EcoFlow or the Blue Eddy, and I don't know, let's try it out right now. Uh, the only reason you'd want to do that is maybe you're out in the bush and you have a ton of gas and you're driving around, or you have solar, I can show you that too. Uh, you have solar and you're getting tons of power and you max out those two batteries and you wanna max out the light time one and back it up, let's test it out. Basically all we're gonna have to do is plug this charge unit, our charger for the light time, into the Blue Eddy and see if it is outputting power out of the the EcoFlow or the Blue Eddy. All right, you can see I've got power here because that's plugged into the EcoFlow. Got the uh, AC converter turned on and it is pulling uh, one or two amps right now, which is just what it takes to, to run this display or whatever. But we're not plugged in yet. You can see the cigarette lighter. So let's just plug these two pieces together and see what happens here. Okay, so we've got this cable that comes out of the battery. The battery goes into this cigarette lighter. This goes into this unit and this goes into there. So really this will go the other way. The power will come out of there and into there. I don't know if it works. We're about to find out. Output watts. Yeah, it's going uh, 95, 100, 110. It is, it's doing it. You can see right here, we're charging 256. Let me know in the comments down below if this is all good, but basically we're getting 300 watts of power coming out of the EcoFlow into the light time battery. Uh, everything's good here. There's no errors. Everything is a-okay. So it really seems, yeah, you can ch use the your alternator to charge one of these and then charge this back up if you have to, or solar. Yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> that's pretty remarkable, really. Like there's often times I have full power. And I, so I have a solar panel that's on the top of my vehicle here. Or, well, I, I technically just took it off. I'm putting a new one on because the other one was, I got was a dud, but uh, that's amazing. I can use solar to charge these up once I'm full, discharge one of those batteries into the light time and then off we go. And if you're driving a lot on the road, you can charge these batteries up. I think the EcoFlow takes me about six or seven hours to charge it. Um, the Blue Eddy is longer because it's a bigger battery. It's like 10 hours, 12 hours to charge that up while driving. But you throw in the solar there, your 100 watts on a sunny day, just coming in all the time. This is a great system. It backs 
each other up. Let's just jump up top here. And I'll show you how the, I have this set up. So I had to rip this off because it was a, a faulty solar panel, but it's a flexible one. And I just, it was tucked in to this uh, Gorilla tape and I had this 3M tape taped down and that was it. And I built this little deflector to deflect the, the wind over it. And then all that, that just came off the back there, the cables, and then runs in where I had this gucky mark. This, it was taped in. And then that just plugs right in and I can do solar right off the roof of it. I had, it was actually a 160 watt solar panel, but my replacement one I got was a bit smaller, 100 watts. It'll fit in there a little bit better. And it was just a better deal and a better quality solar panel. I'll be installing that new solar panel soon, but I'll link that up down below if you guys are interested in that. But this system with the lifetime battery is like foolproof. And, and not only that, let me show you one other thing that's amazing. If you get stuck and your battery's dead, your car battery's dead, check this out. So underneath my front seat here, there's a little drawer and I've got, you can see here, these are jumper cables that are attached to this, this whatever it's called, Autovox unit. And this allows me to jump my car battery. If, and it has, a, it has a charge in it. I think you can jump two batteries with that one thing. Now what's cool about that is I can use any one of these three battery sources to charge the Autovox to jump the vehicle. There's no way my car battery will ever be dead in the woods with this much power. Now I think if you're used to use these jumper cables that came with, put these uh, alligator clamps on there. I don't know if this is bad or good or if this would work, but you could attach these alligator clamps onto your car battery, plug this into the Lightime battery. You would probably get a jump out of it. I would try it if I was stuck in the woods and all I had was the Lightime battery and this alligator clips. Why not? But obviously the safer thing to do is just to charge the Autovox off one of these units and away you go. So between the EcoFlow and the Blue Eddy and then the Lightime backing them up and then the solar on the roof, I actually have a folding solar panel as well for when I'm out and you know I'm sitting editing or whatever I'm out in the bush for a long time you could be out there for <laughs> forever <laughs> with the amount of power coming in it's pretty sweet the the technology and the advancements we have today so if you guys are interested in doing your own setup like this using the backup power from a lifetime battery like this I'll link this up down below the value on these batteries is incredible if you look at anything else like the just the reviews and the quality of battery they're unmatched if you're someone who doesn't have like a Blue Eddy or EcoFlow, so you don't have anything with an interface and you still want the cheap power, what you can do is if you get one of those lifetime batteries, you can get an inverter. Based on the size of that power unit, you'd want like a 1200 watt inverter, which allow you to properly pull out the, the amount of power out of it. They run about 180 bucks on Amazon. So even if you're going that route with the lifetime battery plus a power inverter, you'd be like five, six, 700 bucks. 700 bucks in and then you could also get a few other things like a power monitor so you know exactly how much power in and out you have but if you don't care about that as much i mean you could basically be have a, a bigger capacity than the blue eddy ac 180 which costs 1200 dollars for 700 dollars, and you can easily double the power of your your uh, system there by just getting another lifetime battery for like where well, they're about 470 bucks i think on sale canadian for another so if another 470 you could double the power system that's why so many people go with those power blocks versus getting multiple one of these uh, blue eddy systems or, or ecoflow etc because they just cost so much more and the other thing you're going to need regardless is a, a charger like this i'll link this one up down below there are cheaper ones too and like i said the the display on this isn't all that accurate for the power level that's left in the battery so maybe you'd want to try, try out a cheaper one but this one just seems to it works and it has all the different settings on it like for AGM, lithium, etc. So seems like a good unit, has lots of good reviews. And to save you guys all the hassle that I took to find all the right cables, I'll link up all these cables down below. This one, the cigarette cable with the fuse, as well as this adapter cable for the EcoFlow. And just remember the EcoFlow uses these uh, XT60, the yellow ones, where the Blue Eddy uses this other plug. I can't remember what it's called, D DC9, something like that, DC10. It's, it's this round plug. So just make sure you know what you're getting and Make sure you get the right adapters based on the unit you get, but there isn't that many adapters. There's also another red one, so it just depends on what unit you you have if you're going this route, you know, beefing up a, a current system you have. Hopefully you guys got some good value here of me showing you my power system and how I set this up with that new battery. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys are doing for your systems and how they vary from mine. I'd love to hear. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.